today, since it is the second Sunday of Advent, last Sunday was the first Sunday of Advent, we'll, I have a reading this morning. I don't have anybody down to read that, so I will read it. And uh, Steve has been so kind to say he would light the candles for us. So I'll do the Advent uh, reading at this time for our second Sunday of Advent. The scripture is from the book of Luke, chapter 1. Verses 5 through 25. It's about Zechariah and Elizabeth. During the time of Herod's rule, Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah. He belonged to Abijah's group. Zechariah's wife came from the family of Aaron. Her name was Elizabeth. Zechariah and Elizabeth truly did what God said was good. They did everything the Lord commanded and told people to do. They were without fault in keeping this, his law. But Zechariah and Elizabeth had no children. Elizabeth could not have a baby, and both of them were very old. Zechariah was serving as a priest before God for his group. It was his group's time to serve according to the custom of the priest. He was chosen to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. There were a great many people outside praying at the time the incense was offered. Then on the right side of the incense table, an angel of the Lord came and stood before Zechariah. When he saw the angel, Zechariah was confused and frightened. But the angel said to him, Zechariah, don't be afraid. Your prayer has been heard by God. Your wife, Elizabeth, will give birth to a son. You will name him John. You will be very happy. Many people will be happy because of his birth. John will be a great man for the Lord. He will never drink wine or beer. Even at the time John is born, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will help many people of Israel return to the Lord their God. He himself will go first before the Lord. John will be powerful in spirit, like Elijah. He will make peace between fathers and their children. He will bring those who are not obeying God back to the right way of thinking. He will make people ready for the coming of the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How can I know that what you say is true? I am an old man, my wife is old too. The angel answered him, I am Gabriel. I stand before God. God sent me to talk to you and to tell you this good news. Now listen, you will not be able to talk until the day these things happen. You will lose your speech because you did not believe what I told you. But these things will really happen. Outside, the people were still waiting for Zechariah. They were surprised that he was staying so long in the temple. So Zechariah came outside, but he could not speak to them. So they knew that he had seen a vision in the temple. Zechariah could not speak. He, he could only make signs to them. When his time of service was a priest was finished, he went home. Later, Zechariah's wife, Elizabeth, became pregnant. She did not go out of her house for five months. Elizabeth said, look what the Lord has done for me. My people were ashamed of me, but now the Lord has taken away that shame. And that's our reading for the second Advent Sunday. Thank you. Okay. Um, the scripture reading this morning is from Mark chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. And the title of my message is Experience the Excitement of a Big Event. Again, the scripture is in the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11, beginning with verse 4. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judea countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth to Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him and a voice from the heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. 
May God bless the reading of his holy word. When you experience the excitement of a big event, you naturally want to tell someone. Telling the story can bring back that original thrill as you relive the experience. Reading from the book of Mark, you can sense his excitement. I would like you to step back in time with me. Picture yourself in a crowd as Jesus heals and he's teaching you. Imagine yourself as one of the disciples. Respond to his words of love and encouragement. Remember that Jesus came for us who live today as well as those who lived 2,000 years ago. Mark was not one of the 12 disciples of Jesus, but it appears that Mark probably knew Jesus personally. Mark wrote his gospel in the form of a fast-paced story, kind of like a popular novel. The book of Mark portrays Jesus as a man who backed up his words with action that constantly proved who he is, the Son of God. Because Mark wrote the gospel for Christians in Rome where many gods were worshipped. Mark wanted his readers to know that Jesus is the one true Son of God. Let's take a look back at the Old Testament. Isaiah was one of the greatest prophets in the Old Testament. The second half of the book of Isaiah is devoted to the promise of salvation. Isaiah wrote about the coming of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, and the man who would announce his coming. John the baptizer. Hundreds of years earlier, the prophet Isaiah had predicted that John the Baptist and Jesus would come. How did Isaiah know? God promised Isaiah that a deliverer would come to Israel and that a voice crying in the wilderness would prepare the way for him. Isaiah's words comforted many people as they looked forward to the Messiah. Knowing that God keeps his promises can comfort us too. Why does the Gospel of Mark begin with the story of John the Baptist and not mentioning the story of Jesus' birth? Have you ever thought about that? Well, it was important that Roman officials of that day were always preceded and announced by a herald. So if you were important, there'd be a herald that would arrive in town first. That, then the people would know that somebody of providence was soon going to arrive. Since Mark's audience was primarily Roman Christians, Mark began his book with John the Baptist, the one whose mission it was to announce the coming of Jesus. Jesus is the most important man who ever lived. Roman Christians would have actually been less interested in Jesus' birth than the announcement given by the herald. Who's John the Baptist? John is the son of Zechariah and Elizabeth. Mary, Jesus' mother, and Elizabeth were related. John was a few months older than Jesus. John and Jesus were very different from each other. John left home, went to live in a rough outdoor life in the hot, bare desert near the Jordan, River Jordan. He wanted to be alone and find out God's purpose for him. John was this plain and outspoken man like the prophet Elijah and dressed like him too. He wore a rough camel skin coat, tied around the waist with a leather belt. He ate the desert food or wild honey and locusts. We are told that he never shaved and had long hair. John was an unusual man, but he was a man of a mission. In the book of Mark, John is the herald. God gave John a message to preach, and crowds came. They soon just flocked out to hear him. The crowds came out to John. John, in fact, did not come into town at all. If you wanted to hear John, you went out to where he was. Obviously, the Spirit of God was on this man. 
the people were baptized by John in the Jordan, confessing their sins. The very fact that they submitted to John's baptism was an indication that they were leaving their old lives and turning to their new lives. I'm going to make you jump, because when John talked, John thundered. He didn't just talk. He thundered. That's what the scripture says. He thundered. And it says, listen! John would thunder. Listen! God's kingdom is on its way! See that you are ready for it! Put your lives right with God! I did that without warning in a church service one time when I became a speaker. There was a little boy that was just all over his mom. He wasn't behaving. He shot out of half of his seat when I did that. <laughs> and he was good at the rest of the service. <laughs> But when John talked, he talked. He talked hard because he had a mission and he wanted the people to hear it and he wanted to hear it clearly. So he thundered when he spoke. Probably similar to how Bob would yell at one of his farm animals when he's angry at them. <laughs> I, I stand corrected with, at his grandchildren when they correct. But anyway, John was there for a mission and he warned the people that God would punish them if they did not repent and change their ways. But he also brought them good news. John told the people, I am preparing the way for a very important person who is coming soon. He is so much greater than I am that I am not good enough to even be a slave. I'm only baptizing you with water. He will bring you all God's blessings and power. He will be God's awaiting king. The people were asking, why? Why should we do that? They said, we are God's chosen people. We must be pleased with us. But John warns them. He says, no rely on that. Well, you know, he thundered it. Don't you rely on that. Being born an Israelite does, doesn't, isn't good enough. You must tell God how sorry you are for doing evil and begin to live lies that please him. Many people knew that it was God's voice speaking to them. They were very sorry for breaking God's laws and wanted to please God, so John baptized them in the River Jordan. This was a sign to show everyone that God had forgiven them and given them a clean new start. Jesus, he came to see John. Jesus asked John to baptize him. John, John didn't want to baptize Jesus. John said Jesus had never gone his own way or disobeyed God. Jesus had nothing to be sorry for. But Jesus persisted. He believed that this is what God wanted him to do. So John baptized Jesus. As Jesus came up from the water, a strange thing happened. Well, John, he tried to describe it afterwards. And I could just imagine the excitement in his voice when John told the people, I saw a spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it <coughs> remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the spirit descend, and remain as the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And John said, I, mis I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. Can you imagine his excitement when he was telling people about that? John and Jesus were related, so John probably knew who Jesus was. But it wasn't until Jesus' baptism that John understood Jesus to be the Messiah. John baptized by water for repentance and symbolized the washing away of sins. Jesus, by contrast, was baptized with the Holy Spirit. He would send the Holy Spirit upon all believers, empowering them to live and to teach the message of salvation. This began after Jesus had risen from the dead 
and descended into heaven, or he ascended. John the Baptist was to point people to Jesus, the Messiah, for whom they were seeking. Today, people are seeking for someone to give them security in an insecure world. Our job as believers in Jesus Christ is to point them to Christ and to show that he is the one they are seeking. Some of the people John baptized became his friends and followers. They would come and listen to him whenever they could. They longed to hear more about the coming king. One day, John was standing with two of his disciples, and he, was, he watched Jesus walk by. He told them, look, there's the Lamb of God. The two disciples hurried after Jesus because they were caught up in John's excitement. Look, there's the Lamb of God. So they took off after Jesus. Something about him made them want to get to know him more. They wanted to know more about him. Suddenly they just stopped. They found they were too shy to follow him. Well, Jesus, he stopped too. And he asked them, what are you looking for? Jesus knew they were wanting to know more about him. He invited them to come and spend the day with him. Jesus extends the same invitation to us. Come and see. Learn more about him and see what, whether or not he is good. I wonder nowadays how many people have driven or walked up to a church parking lot and started to go in, but they stopped. Because there wasn't somebody there to say, come on in and learn more about Jesus. Something in their heart pulled them to come to the parking lot or maybe to the front entrance of the door, but they stopped. That's put in perspective of what could happen today. These men followed Jesus because they wanted to know more, but they stopped. But Jesus turned around and said, come on, come with me. When the disciples went home that night, one of the disciples called Andrew was full of excitement. Andrew rushed to find his brother Simon bursting with news. Andrew told Simon, I have found the Messiah, God's anointed king. Come and meet him. When Simon met Jesus, Jesus gave him a long, searching look. Could you imagine standing there with Jesus? Your, your brother Andrew brings you to meet him. Your name's Simon, and you're standing there, and this Jesus, the Messiah, is giving you the once-over. <laughs> He's not saying anything. He's just looking you over. How uncomfortable would you feel? <coughs> just knowing that he's looking at you like this. But Jesus said, as he watched Simon, he knew that Simon was as weak as water, and he, he, he could see beyond the present as he studied Simon. And Jesus knows our hearts. So Jesus said, I'm going to give you a new name, Simon. I shall call you Peter, the rock. For that is the kind of man you will one day be. Jesus can use anyone if they are seeking him. No matter how weak or how strong you are, Jesus can use you to point out to others. Just point him out to others. Following Jesus is not enough. We must follow him for the right reasons. To follow Christ for our own purposes is asking Christ to follow us. To align us to build our own cause, not his. But we must examine our motives for following him. Are we seeking his glory or ours? May God add his blessing to the sharing of this message this morning. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us your only son to die on the cross for our sins. Please forgive us or we have disappointed you. Help us to be strong followers of Jesus and to learn to love him more.
give us the boldness that you had given to John the Baptist to announce your son Jesus Christ to others. Help us to guide people out of the darkness and into the light that only Jesus can give. Help us to introduce Jesus Christ as the only way to life after death. Give us the courage and the wisdom to stand up to those who are unbelievers and feel that we are foolish for believing in Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. Give us the actions and the words that are needed to encourage them to change their ideas of who Jesus Christ is. Help us to love each other more, to give us the strength that we need to share good news of an everlasting life with you in heaven. To you, our Heavenly Father, we give all the glory for everything that has been and will be done in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.